Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and let's talk mesh operations, also known as mesh ops. In fact, let's be very specific. Let's talk about mesh op aliases, something a very sort of special kind of mesh operation. In fact, it's a mesh operation, it's also a selection operation, and the alias can also be even a channel modifier. So what an alias is, in essence, is an assembly of nodes. So you have a bunch of nodes in the schematic that do something, either modify a channel, or create geometry, or act as a mechanism of selecting a particular type of component like a curve just curves or just five point polygons or something like that and you take all those nodes and you put them in an assembly and then you collapse that assembly down to a single file and that's called an alias and then that can be used in moto uh, anybody's moto and a lot of these come with moto but you can also make them on your own or share them around really it's an interesting um, new tool that makes moto more expandable and hopefully the community can jump on this and create some usable mesh operation aliases or some selection operation aliases uh, or even some channel operation aliases i don't even think it comes with any of those but let me just jump in. It's easier to show than tell. Plus, I already wasted a minute doing that, and William Vaughn is glaring at me from across the internet at my inefficiency. So let's jump over to Mesh Ops. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to press in uh, right here in the uh, item list just to create another empty mesh item. We'll just call profile. And yes, I am going to extrude something along a curve because that is an easy way to do something and show something using Mesh Ops. So I know everybody's seen this a million times. We'll do a curve and a profile. Go over to Mesh Ops and we have the curve selected. I'm going to add an operator. And you'll notice that there's something down here at the bottom. In fact, it may even be collapsed called aliases. And you may be wondering, what is aliases? Sounds like an old TV show. And then you flip it down, you see there's channel modifiers, and you click on it and you see there's nothing there. And you're like, that's kind of weird. Is there really no channel modifier aliases or are they just not show up in the Mesh Op list? And then you go to Mesh Operations and you see there's a couple things here spiral curve text primitive. And then you go to Selection Operations and you see there's a whole bunch of stuff like, select by normal and select curve polygons and oh my god there's all this usable stuff in here that i didn't even know existed and why did anybody tell me about this right so this is what this video is about so let's go to mesh ops and mesh op alias and i'm going to do a spiral curve and voila i have myself a spiral curve i'm just going to move that over here for now uh nah I'll get rid of it um so spiral curve is actually a set of nodes collapsed down into a uh, mesh operation alias, right? It's not coded in C. It's a bunch of moto nodes put together, but it, op you know, it, it, it operates very quickly. So we can put that on the y-axis and do a couple things here. Taper's kind of cool. You can um, taper that bad boy down and uh, let's add some more twists, maybe. I don't know, 657. That just came to my mind for some reason. So it got some twists. Looks like sort of something you wouldn't want to sit on, and I like it. So let's move along. And over in the item list, select my profile. You can also... Um, unexpand this and get an item list above this in the mesh op. I like to keep my mesh op list expanded. So the mesh op list, of course, is the old deformer list in Moto for the order of operations list of deformers. Now, both deformers and mesh operations live in the same place and can be reordered and have all the benefits of the, uh, and turned on and off and everything like that. They have all the benefits that the deformer list had. And, uh, but now it supports mesh operations. So you can, so you can create geometry and not just, and, and delete geometry and not just deform it. So you can see where Moto is kind of going. It's sort of evolving. And, you know, Moto 10 is the first uh, version to have this. So the whole, the <laughs> user interface and everything else is evolving too. So I think you just have to bear with it, but there's a lot of power in here. And if I add an operator, yeah, let's do a uh, insided, we'll do an insided curve because I like to use that for profile because I could, you know, pick whatever many sides I want later. And I'm going to add another operator called, you guessed it, curve extrude, because every mesh op video ever made has a curve extrusion going on. I'm going to pick my curve mesh item that has the spiral in it as my extruder. And boom, I get a big lump of crap. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. This tells me that there's probably some parameters I need to adjust. So if I look into curve extrude, a couple things, let's go curve cage, and that'll use the cage of the um, this insided uh, guy here, and then path segment generator. This is again, this is sort of a UI thing, right? I don't really like having to twirl down to get to the tool pipe. I just like to see all relevant uh, channels available at the top of this list here, but I think we're getting there. We'll see. Moto is going to continue evolving. So let's bump up the steps. One, five, nine, because I like that number. In fact, I like this number better. One, seven, two. Why not? 
And uh, yeah, path generator looks good. Fine, we don't have to do any of that stuff right now. Yeah, all right, looks good. I, and the inside of generator, of course, I can adjust my size. So I can, if I make sure you're in an item uh, mode for channel hall, I almost wonder sometimes if right now, if I am in polygon mode and I press C, I get like curve slice, edge slice. <laughs> But I have to be, if I press five, of course, and go to item mode and press, um, select some channels, press C, I get channel hall. I almost wonder if they should just make that available in both component and item mode. But this is what happens when programs get to be 10 years old and the keyboard shortcuts are gone. So, all right, so let's reduce the size and we can make this, uh, what's cool about, yeah, inside it is I can, you know, buff this up if I want to and get smoother curves there. Uh, let's call that like 56, very smooth, or I can go down to three. Not smooth at all, just a triangle, but you know, that's what I like about procedural modeling, right? You can change it later on. All right, cue to drop the tool, and that's looking pretty good. So let's see, now the um, in the, the spiral was a mesh operation alias, and there's only a couple of those available right now, the text and the spiral, and hopefully we'll get a lot more, but there's a lot of super usable selection operation aliases. So let's add another operator and then do some selection selectioning. Another verb I made up just for these videos. Uh, so let's do uh, mirror, mirror generator. So uh, most of the duplication mesh ops are in Moto now. There's a bunch of them in here, duplicate. Well, of course I have to get rid of that. All these different duplication operations will pick mirror. And again, I kind of got to dig down into the tool pipe section of this to get to the use useful parameters. Let's we'll keep it on X, that's fine. And I'm just gonna channel haul that center over to separate them like that. All right, so we got our extruded profile and our mirrored profile. And let's do some selection operations to decide what exactly we want to mirror over here, all right? Okay, so all mesh operations have a selection dropdown, so we could pipe in a selection operation or a selection operation alias. So again, if I go over to new, there's all kinds of new, all kinds of selection operations here, but it doesn't really, Moto doesn't really come with a ton. There's some very generic ones here, but if you go over to, here to aliases and you troll that down and see selection operations, it's like, boom, look at all this super usable stuff. Select by volume, select by part, select by normal, select by distance, select by curve, select only curve polygons, select only n-gons. And what these are, of course, because these are aliases, these are assemblies that are pieced together with these hard-coded uh, hard -coded in C selection operations and you know these are very genetic genetic generic <laughs> but you know using the schematic and some math and some uh, nodes you can um create very specific ones like uh selecting by part or selecting by curve polygons or selecting polygons by area so it's very uh these are super useful i'd like to see a whole bunch more of these so i'm going to do select by volumes it's a really cool one and so I select, select by volume, and if I twirl that down, you'll see that there's a sources twirl down. So sources, you may be thinking, what is that? Could that possibly mean I can add some geometry and use that as the volume? Could something like that, that cool exist? Well, if you hold down shift, create a cube, and make that cube a little bigger, and come back over here to our guy, and say, not, not our curve, our uh, profile, and over here on sources, add sources, up here in existing, existing is anything in the scene. So I click existing. These are things that are um, available. It's, it sort of auto filters out. It's not gonna put a light in here or a camera. It's only gonna show things that I can actually use, which is nice. And I just plug in the cube. There we go. And you'll see, voila, I'm only mirroring what's in this cube. In fact, it's even real time. Pretty sweet. You can imagine this might be useful for animation or something else. And that's a super useful mesh operation. In fact, let me just um, go background, let me do this. Let me add another one to this. So let me select this guy. And so we've got, you know, selection operations can be layered up uh, just like mesh operations. So I can add another selection operation on top of the cube. So I'm gonna add selection operation, go down here to aliases and say random. So I can pick random. And right now you'll see that it says blend mode override. So it's overriding the volume. It's only doing random polygons for selection. But I can actually multiply this on top. So it works just like you do multiply in something like Photoshop. Um, it's only going to affect what the volume is selecting. So I go to multiply and you know our, what's within the volume is a one and what's without is a zero. So 
And uh, with a selection random, any polygon that is selected is a one, any polygon that's not selected is a zero. So our zero is unselected, so everything outside of this volume is multiplied by zero, so it's unselected. Anything inside the volume is that, that is assigned to one by the select random uh, selection alias is multiplied by the one inside the cube, and that makes it selected. There. <laughs> Basic math, right? So anyway, multiply it, and it's selected. And of course, you can adjust this as well. Anyway, not sure I'd actually use this for anything, but you can see how this works. Both layering up selection operations, or in this case, selection operation aliases, which are actually probably at the end of the day more useful um, and more specific than selection operations, because selection operations are really very uh, generic. And they're just building blocks for, for these selection operation aliases, which are much more specific. And so at some point, I'd love to see a big, long list of different selection operation aliases where we can really get in there and select, get really granular in our selection operations. But anyway, you can see how this works. Pretty cool. We got uh, mesh op aliases, selection operation aliases. I do not believe there are any channel modifier aliases yet. I could be wrong, but this video does not have time for them anyway, because I'm over 10 minutes. How did that happen? All right, farewell. Yum, yum.